In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you this day. We thank you for our workers meeting. Thank you for your children. Thank you for our workers. Thank you for our leaders, our pastors, our overseers. Thank you for a great day like this. We pray, O Lord, that you touch every life today in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray, Lord, that you grant us understanding. Amen. Grant us insight. Amen. Grant us your power. Amen. The power that changes lives. Amen. Rolls every problem away. Amen. Makes us the kind of workers, militant workers we ought to be. Conquerors we will be. Will be the light of the world around us. Use us to your glory in this hour, this age, and in our community. We we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Come to First Timothy chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 12. It says, Let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. He's talking to us about life. He's talking to us about character. He's talking to us about the behavior of a believer. But before behavior, let's believe before you can have an example be an example there must be the emancipator there must be who we call the expiator expiator is the one when we're talking about expiation that's the one that makes a sacrifice for your sins to be atoned for and for the sins to be taken away you cannot be an example to anybody, you cannot be an example in character, in word, in conversation, in faith, in spirit, in purity, without you passing through Calvary. You have to pass through Calvary first. You must behold the lamp of first. Behold the emancipator, the one that takes our sins away. Because you know, all that we do, you try to live a good life, a righteous life, a wonderful life before conversion. All that in the sight of God is filthy rags. So if you've not been to Calvary, if you have not been to Christ, if you have not tasted the cross, if you have not seen Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who died for us on the cross of Calvary, coming to 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 will be a waste of your time. In fact, it's impossible. You know what? Jesus, yes, is a pattern because it says he has given us an example that we should follow his steps. But... Before you can follow him as a pattern, you must see him as a propitiator. The propitiation for your sin. The one that takes all your sins away. That means you must look at the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And then when you visit him, when you get to him, when you turn away from sin and you turn to the Savior, you turn away from the past and you turn to the one that died for you on the cross of Calvary, only then will he impart his life into you. Only then, with all that we're reading about being an example and being righteous and being faithful and behaving as a Christian ought to behave, only then will it be possible. That's the reason why we're coming back now to John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, I read from verse 35. Then I'll back up to verse 29. Verse 35, it tells us again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus, that's the direction to look. Looking upon Jesus, 
That's what to think about. Looking upon Jesus, that's the one that you must connect with. That's the one that must have an impact in your life, a power in your life, irresistible. And you look at him, you look away from every other personality. You look away from yourself. You look away from the work of your hand. You look away from religion. You look away from people, people of the past and people of the present. And you look unto Jesus. He saw Jesus and looking upon Jesus as a watch. It says, Behold the Lamb of God. You'll see that he said again the next day in verse 35. Because he had said that a day before. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, he says, The next day, that's still another day after the previous one. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him. And says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And that was said by John. And it was John, another John, that wrote it down to John's. Number one, John the Baptist. He was the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was like the herald for the king, the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the one making the announcement that there's one coming after me. I'm not worthy to even hold a shoe or to loosen the lashet of his shoe. And he said, he must increase and I must decrease. And as he saw Jesus Christ, he began to point Jesus out. And that's why he said, behold the lamb. Look to the lamb. He said, look away from me. I'm just a foreigner. He said, look away from me. I'm just an herald. He said, look away from me. I came to point out Jesus Christ. Look at him. He is a savior. Look at him. He is a sanctifier. Look at him. He is a healer. Look at him. He is our deliverer. Look at him. He is the final sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And then John the beloved, that's John the Baptist. Here John the beloved now wrote everything down. And he said, I'm writing all this that you might believe. And then you look on that Jesus, he takes your sin away, and then eventually he takes you to heaven. John the Baptist, one. John the beloved, two. And then both of them pointing you and I to the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lamb. Actually, as you look at John, that is the gospel according to St. John, he presents Jesus to us, number one, as the Lamb. Number two, as the light. Number three, as a life. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. The Lamb is a sacrifice. The light it shows us the might of God. The life, it brings us out of death into life eternal. It shows us Christ as the Lord. The Lord of the universe. The Lord of heaven and earth. And the Lord of the believer. And the Lord, the head of the church. It tells us Jesus is the Lamb. It tells us Jesus is the light. It tells us Jesus is alive. It tells us Jesus is the Lord. It tells us Jesus is the liberator. Is the one that came to set us free. In chapter 1, it sets us free from sin. Behold the Lamb of God. In chapter 2, it sets us free from need in our life. 
they have no wine, he turned water into wine. In chapter 3, he sets us free, like Brito, from condemnation. He that believeth on me is not condemned. In chapter 4, he sets us free from shame. Go call your husband. I don't have any husband. You said well, because you're being with five men, and the person you're sitting with now is not your husband. I guess you're a prophet. Now they told us this and this. We're looking for the Messiah. I that speak unto you. I am the one. He sets us free free from sickness will you be made whole chapter 5 it says i do not have anybody when they trouble the water then while i'm coming uh, you know everything uh, somebody gets in there and he said rise up and take your bed he sets us free he is the liberator in chapter 6 it tells sets us free from hunger because he says i am the bread that comes from heaven in chapter 7 he sets us free from all our incapacity or incompetence because he that believes in me out of him shall flow rivers of living water in chapter 8 he sets us free from condemnation woman where are those that accuse us as no man condemned you no man lord and then he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more john is telling us that jesus is the liberator he is the leader you call me lord and master you say well because so i am if i have done this or you do that to other people too he is the leader and then as john now writes revelation he says it's not only the lamb it's more than that it's not only the life it's more than that it's not only the light it's more than that it's not only the leader is more than that it's not only the lord is more than that it's not only the liberator is more than that behold the lion of the tribe of judah the king of kings and the lord of lords and so as you come to john and john is saying behold behold you'll behold the lamb today and as you behold the lamb everything your life will turn around no matter where you are now it is going to take you higher i'm going higher today i said i'm going higher today because john said of all that i've told you he is the ladder because he told nathaniel because i saw you under that fig tree and I told you that I saw you, you believe on me, I'll show you greater things. Greater things will come upon your life. You will see the Son of Man, and then angels going between earth and heaven over him. He is the ladder. He's the one that takes us from where we are, and he's the one that takes us higher. He'll take us to heaven. And so, I'm talking about that tonight, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. I'm talking to you on beholding the wonders of the Lamb. Beholding the wonders of the Lamb. A wonder will take place in your life. Something supernatural. Something you have never known. Your soul will receive a touch. Your spirit will receive a touch. Your body will receive a touch. Your talent will receive an uplift. You will walk better. You will run faster. You will do the work in a more intelligent way. In Jesus' name, the fire of the Holy Ghost will come in your soul. As you behold the Lamb, everything that happened at Calvary will come to happen to you. As you behold the Lamb, a new experience, a new life, a new thirst, a new power, a new energy will come to you today in Jesus' name. Beholding the wonders of the lamb number one there are three things we're going to talk about behold the redeeming lamb of god behold the redeeming lamb of god number two believe the revealed liberator for godliness behold believe the revealed liberator for godliness number three benefit from the reigning Lord of glory. Benefit from the reigning Lord of glory. Number one, tell me number one there. Behold the redeeming Lamb of God. Come back to that John 
I'm looking at John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him. He's coming to you today. If you will open the eyes of your spirit, you will see him. If you will open your mind unto God, you will see him. He said, Jesus coming to him. And Jesus is no respecter of persons. He's not partial at all. As he came to him, he's coming to you. He will meet the need of your life. He will resolve the problems of your life. He will kind of loosen all the knots of your life. You will never be the same again. And then he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The sin of the world. Behold the Lamb. Can I tell you about the Lamb? It first of all happened in Genesis. God had asked Abraham to bring his only son, what's his name? Isaac. And he was going, and then Isaac was carrying the wood for sacrifice. And he asked his father, he said, My father, here is the wood, here is the fire. What is the lamb for the sacrifice? And then Abraham prophetically, Abraham dispensationally, Abraham spiritually, he told the son, he said, my son, God will provide himself, tell me, a lamb for the sacrifice. And then he got to the place of sacrifice. And as he was about to sacrifice Isaac, God said, Hold it, Abraham. I only tested you to bring your son to show an example of what I am going to do to give my only begotten son for the salvation of the whole world. He looked up and he saw the ram and he took that and sacrificed that in place of Isaac. The lamb is a substitute, a substitute. That is, all souls are mine. The soul that sinners, it shall die. You should have died. I should have died. I should have been on that altar. And the fire should have been upon us. Eternal fire. But behold, the lamb is your substitute. It's your sin bearer. You will not die again because Christ died for you, the lamb. And then we come to Exodus. In Exodus... The Lord instructed the people and said, each family will take a lamb and they will sacrifice it. And they will put the blood in the bowl. And then it says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's the lamb again. It is the lamb that rescued them, saved them, protected them, preserved them from death. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. He's provided the propitiation, the protection, the pardon, so that we will not die in our sin. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Today, when he sees the blood of Jesus on you, sickness will pass over you. Death, premature death will pass over you. All the attacks, all the affliction will pass over you. And judgment, eternal judgment, will pass over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to Isaiah chapter 53. It's led as a lamb to the slaughter. And he opened not his mouth. Here Isaiah is still telling us the progressive revelation of the lamb. And so the lamb now has come or is going to come because he said, Behold, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And now he said, He has laid the iniquity of us all on him. That's the lamb. All our iniquities are laid on him. And as you come to Christ, as you behold the lamb, and you lay all your sin, all your guilt, all your condemnation, everything you've ever done wrong, you lay that on Christ, he carries them away to the sea of God's forgiveness.
faithfulness. And your sins will never be remembered against you anymore. Because of the Lamb. Because of the Lamb. And here, Peter tells us in Peter chapter 1, he says, We're not redeemed with silver and gold, but we're redeemed with the precious blood of the Lamb without spot and without blame. He tells us then our redemption comes from Jesus Christ. And in Revelation chapter 5, John was shown a vision of heaven. There was a sealed book. A book of redemption. Nobody could open that book because it was sealed. And because of that, John wept. He said, I wept. And then one of the people, one of the angels in heaven, glorified uh, angel, said, John, don't weep. Somebody has prevailed. The lamb, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he has prevailed to open the book. And then as John was looking for a lion, behold, the lamb. As if he had just been slain, standing before the throne of God, and the whole of heaven rejoiced in excitement because the lamb, the lion, has prevailed to open the book. The lamb who died on the cross of Calvary, the lion who comes to reign with the millennial reign, and then he will reign forever and ever, and we shall be with him in Jesus' name. Genesis, a lamb for the individual, Isaac. Exodus, a lamb for the family, each family. Isaiah, a lamb for the nation, the whole nation. John chapter 1, a lamb for the world. Revelation chapter 5, a lamb for the universe. A lamb for for the individual, any individual that comes, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And to every individual, behold the Lamb. It takes away the sin of the world. The family, he will save you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved and thy, tell me, and thy family. The Lamb is for the individual, the Lamb is for the family. The lamb is for the whole nation. The lamb is for whosoever in the whole nation. Kafa said, you know nothing at all. That it is expedient that one man die, that the whole nation be not led into captivity. It's the lamb for a whole nation. But it's the lamb for the world. Lamb for the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, I am that whosoever. That whosoever, I am the whosoever. Whosoever believes in him will not perish. Look up at me here. I will not perish. I will not perish. I believe in the Lamb. I accept the Lamb. I put all my sins on the Lamb. I come under the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, will not perish, but have. What do I have? But have, I have something. What do I have? But have, what do you have? everlasting life and is the lamb for the whole world that's why we're going to india that's why we're going to the rest of africa that's why we're going to australia that's why we're going everywhere in the world we're telling them the lamb has been slain the lamb has been killed and we're telling them the only thing you need to do look away from religion look away from yourself look away from everything you have been holding on to behold the lamb it will take your sin away and if you are there today and the devil is accusing you and the devil is torturing your life and the devil is tormenting you you are a sinner you are a sinner you are a sinner look away from satan look to calvary as we look at christ tonight as we look at jesus tonight because he is the lamb remember it's not just a lamb for the nation of israel it's a lamb for the whole world it will take your sin away it will take the guilt of your sin away it will take the presence of your sin away. 
It will take the record of your sin away. It will break the power of sin from your life. It will make you victorious. You'll be more than a conqueror from tonight. In Jesus' name. Behold the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. And I'm reading here from verse 32. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 verse 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearers, he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray you, I beg you, I beg of you, I plead with you, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. How? Jesus as your sin bearer, Jesus as your substitute, Jesus as the final sacrifice, Jesus as the Savior. Whosoever, there's no restriction, you can come and behold the Lamb. And there is nothing that blocks your view. You can look up to him from your heart and you can whisper the prayer unto him. You feel the guilt of sin. You feel the pressure of condemnation. And then you say, I know the lamb avails for me. It takes my guilt away. It takes my condemnation away. It breaks the power of cancel sin. I behold the lamb. Do you see that sentence? Behold the lamb. We take the sin of the world away. There's no barrier between that word behold and the taking away. The moment you behold him, the moment you look at him and you say, he is mine. He died for me. He is mine. He paid the price for me. That moment there's no barrier. All your sins will be taken away. And as the sins are taken away here on earth, in heaven, the record, any sin you ever committed is totally wiped away. And then he sees you that you are free. Somebody there, you are free. Somebody there, I said you are free. Free from condemnation. Free from guilt. Free from judgment. Free from eternal punishment. Thank God. God, Jesus has made me free. He takes all the sins away and then he cleanses your heart from the pollution of the sin. Not only that, he breaks the power and sets you free. I'm looking at free people there tonight. I said I'm looking at free people there tonight. Then all the consequences of what you did in the past, sickness, infirmity, whatever, blots out everything. We come to point number two. Believe the revealed librator. Believe the revealed librator. Now, you need to understand that as you come to John, this is a central theme. That word, believe. Everybody help me shout, believe. believe. As you go through John, John chapter 1 verse 12. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As we come to chapter 2 verse 11, it says, The beginning of the miracles of Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed on him. The word believe, as we come to chapter 3 in verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. As we come to verse 36, it says, he that 
believest on the Son has everlasting life. He said, what believe in every chapter there? Come to chapter 4 and verse 42. And he said unto the woman, now we believe, not only not because of thy saying, but for we have seen him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ the Savior of the world. Come to chapter 5 in verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. As we come to chapter 6, here Peter is making the confession in verse 69. And he's telling us, he says, and we believe, that's the word again, and we're sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And what John is telling us is that John the Baptist has said, behold the Lamb. But now John the beloved comes and he says, you know what that means? Believe the librator. Believe the librator. It will set you free. It will set you free from sin. It will set you free from sickness. It will set you free from Satan. It will set you free from evil spirit. It will set you free from every circumstance in this world. If you can only believe. Believe the revealed librator for godliness. So come to chapter 7. It says, he that believeth on me. As the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You come to chapter 8 in verse 24. It says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sin. You see, it's telling us in every chapter it says, I'm writing this chapter to tell you that you must believe. I'm preaching to you to tell you you must believe. I'm revealing the Lamb unto you to say that you must believe. You must believe. You behold the Lamb and then you believe him as your librator. He will liberate you today. You see, if somebody is saying, I am bound, I am helpless, I am hopeless, what can I do? Very simple, believe. I said believe, all those chains will be broken. Believe, all those evil things will vanish away. Believe, it will take all those things away in Jesus' name. Chapter 8 Verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Have you, do you remember chapter 14 verse 12? He that believeth on me, he that believeth on me, something is about to happen to you. He that believeth on me, the works I do, shall he do also? Because, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. It's telling us the importance of just believe. Believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. is going to do the unthinkable, incredible, impossible in your life in Jesus' name. Believe the revealed librator for godliness. And look at what he says in that John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verse 29, when you believe, see what it does. It says, the next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God. Tell me the rest. Have you noticed that what taketh? For the people at that time, he took their sins away. But he didn't stop there because he taketh, he taketh, he taketh. And every time a new person comes and he says, I want my sins to be taken away. He said, I'm still doing it because he taketh away, he taketh away, he takes yours away. Another person will come again. I want my sins to be taken away. He says, yes, I'm still doing it because he taketh, he taketh. He will take your sins away. And somebody comes tonight and is feeling the load of guilt and the load of condemnation. He says, Jesus, are you still there? 
are you still taking the sins away or have you stopped have you finalized have, he says no i'm still here and he will take all your sins away because he takes away the sin of the world look at first john chapter 3 First John chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 5. First John chapter 3, and we're reading here from verse 5. Open your Bible. It says in verse 5, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. See John, the beloved, writing many years after the gospel of St. John. Or after John the Baptist has said what he said. He said, he's still doing it today. He will do it for you. That's how salvation comes. That's how sanctification comes. That's how purity comes. That's how victory over sin, that's how it comes. It says, and you know, that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Amen. Amen. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. You will be righteous. Even as he is righteous, then he says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. I will not be of the devil. Uh, you know, somebody says, uh, the pastor is not here. I will cut corners a little. Then you sell yourself to the devil. Uh, the, our leader is not here. I will mess up a little. Then you become a slave of the devil. Because he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Tell me that he might that he might that he might destroy the works of the devil no work of the devil will remain in my life you present yourself to christ you come to calvary you allow the blood of jesus christ to wash and cleanse and purge and purify you all those things it will cancel and destroy them in jesus name and then every other thing that the devil is trying to do in any corner there in the sick place of darkness. And then he's uh, kind to give you this and give you this. He say, I'll kill you. I say, Satan, you are a liar. Somebody there tells Satan he's a liar. <laughs> Satan, you are a liar. Because Jesus Christ has been given for you to destroy all the works of the devil. Congratulations, you are here tonight. It will destroy everything the devil is trying to maneuver in your life in Jesus' name. It sets us free. And it's that freedom that makes us to know that when Christ comes, we're totally, completely different. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5, it comes to our lives and then it does something you know, that, uh, you know, you have never experienced before. A new life is coming. A new experience is coming. A new power is coming. Because you believe the liberator who is revealed unto us. John chapter 5 verse 14. Are you there? After what Jesus findeth him in the temple. He will find you in the temple here today. Jesus found him and findeth him in the temple. And said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Behold, thou art made whole. Behold, thou art made whole. See no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Some people say it's impossible to stop sinning. Ah, when you get to Calvary, Calvary will make the impossible possible. Somebody says, I cannot overcome this sin. I cannot overcome that sin. I invite you to come and behold the Lamb tonight and believe the liberator tonight. Once you meet him, he's going to totally knock off and knock down and take away all the power of sin from your life in Jesus' name. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come upon thee. Chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 11. Chapter 8, we're looking at verse Verse 11, she said, no man, Lord, that is, after Jesus asked the question, where are those non accusers, as no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord, and Jesus said unto her, 
Lord, talk to me. Lord, talk to me. Jesus is talking to you now. I said, Jesus is talking to you now. Say, Lord, talk to me. Look at what he's telling you. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He's giving you liberation. He's giving you deliverance. He has given you the power. He said, I forget the past. Whatever you did in the past, neither do I condemn you. But now, from today, I give you the power. I give you the liberty. I give you the liberation. Go and sin no more. You will not continue in sin. Romans chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 6. And we're reading here from verse 6. In Romans chapter 6, verse 6, knowing this, of course, if you've met Christ, you know this. If you have received the salvation, you know this. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your liberator, you know this, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, that henceforth, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life he sets us free how does how does this happen number one you repent of all sins you repent thoroughly and you repent thoughtfully you repent thoroughly and you repent thoughtfully there's some people that come to christ they come to maybe a crusade or they come to a normal meeting like this and they say they want to come to Christ and they say they repent. They do not repent thoughtfully. They don't think about their lives. They just raise up their hands. Jesus, they say, you are calling us. Okay, here I am. Uh -uh. Put down your hand. Be thoughtful about it. Which work of darkness have you done? Which sins have you committed? What has been the habitual sin that is making you fall every time? Are you sorrowful about it? Are you sorry about it? Are you concerned about it? Do you see that you are in bondage? Be thoughtful about it. And then be sorrow. Be sorrow. Lord, I'm a sinner. Uh-uh. Don't say that. Lord, look at what I've done. Look at the lies in my mouth. Look at the sensual life, immoral life I live. Look at the stealing. Be thorough. If you repent thoroughly and thoughtfully, as you come to the then you forsake everything. Say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. That's when he will say, you mean business. You're very serious about this. And it will take all those things away in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. You repent thoughtfully. You repent thoroughly. Ezekiel chapter 18. We're reading from verse 30. Verse 30. It says in verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions. How many transgressions? Tell me out loud. All your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure 
in the death of him that dieth, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. Number two, remove all obstacles. Remove all obstacles to your freedom. If you are associated with a particular person who is always leading you into sin, the thought of him brings immorality of the past. The picture of him arouses the immorality of the past. The association with him reminds you of the work of darkness behind the curtain. And every time you say, I come to the Lord, I come to the Lord. When you go back, once he calls you, once you call her, once you see the picture, once you remember how associated you were, all the decisions you took, while you said you gave yourself to the Lord, everything evaporates. So what do you do? You remove all the obstacles to your freedom. You will not be a slave. I said you will not be a slave. That person is a sinner. He's going to hell if he does not repent. And you, of all people, you are linked up as a slave and tied with a chain to a child of disobedience, a child of wrath, a child of Satan, a person who is on pilgrimage to hell. You are linked to him and you are here and you say you are a worker. But you say today, I'm going to break that thing. I didn't hear amen there. I'm going to break this connection with this person. I'm looking at Jesus. For me, he's the lover of my soul. For me, he's the greatest personality I will ever have. For me, he's the friend, he's the friend of the backslider and the friend of the sinner. He loves me because he loves me. I'm breaking up my association with that person. And when you break that, you come in connection with Christ. Freedom will come to your life. You see, the people of the past, they were so thorough about their confession. They were so thorough about their conviction. They were so thorough about their repentance. And they were so thorough about removing every obstacle that will hinder them from freedom. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading to you here from chapter 19. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. And I'm reading here from verse 18. Acts chapter 19, verse 18. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which use curious arts, brought the books together and burnt them before all men and they counted the price of them and they found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. Number three, your pray was sincere determined heart you pray and you say lord i'm going to be cleansed i'm going to be converted i'm going to be saved i'm going to be restored i'm going to be sanctified and you pray that prayer and you'll not give up i will not let you go except you save me I will not let you go except to cleanse me. I will not let you go except to break this chain of sin. I will not let you go unless you set me free. I will not let you go except to sanctify me. With all your heart, you call upon the name of the Lord and you seek his face until he answers. It will burn off all those sins in your life in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah. Maya, chapter 29 verse 12 it says then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me tell me 
with all your heart, all your heart. You come to God, no reservation. You are not holding anything back. Lord, I want to totally surrender and submit my life unto you. I must be free. I'm looking at somebody who's going to be free today. It will set you free in Jesus' name. Then you believe the Lord for the work of grace. Believe the Lord for the work of grace. His grace will sanctify you. His grace will purify you. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth. And said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. See after that, verse 8, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send after the cleansing? Whom shall I send after that sanctification? Whom shall I send after the purifying? Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I. Answer the Lord now. Answer the Lord. Answer with deep conviction in your heart. Here am I. Send me. He will send you. As you behold the Lamb. You believe the liberator. Now, point number three, you benefit from the reigning Lord. You benefit from the reigning Lord. We're coming back to John chapter 1, verse 29. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him. Who is Jesus coming to today? I said, who is Jesus coming to today? Will you see him? Will you receive him? Will you believe him? Will you turn away from every other person in life and turn to Jesus Christ? He is our savior. He's our all in all. He can do in your life what no man on earth can do. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. John chapter 6, verse 16. Many therefore of his disciples... When they heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can receive this? I told you, there are people who say they come to Christ, they're not thorough. There are people who come to Christ, who say they come to Christ, they're not single-minded. There are people who say they come to Christ, they have not bunched the bridge behind them. They still have attachment to the past. They still have somebody else to go back to. They still have the picture of the old director directing their lives. They still have an attachment to the past benefactor from whom they benefited. They still have a chain binding them to the old figure personality in their lives and when they heard something from Christ and what did he tell them I am the bread of life anyone that takes of this bread will live forever 
I am the water of life. Anyone that takes this will never thirst again. I am the bread sent from heaven. The Father has given me to you to be the solution to all the problems in your life. They said, it was, they said that was hard. They said they couldn't understand that. And eventually, verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back. Anybody ready to go back there? The world is pulling some people. The entertainment of the world pulling some people. The festivities of the world drawing some people. Love of money and business in the world drawing some people. And some of them went back and walked no more with him. Look up here. I will not go back. I've made my decision to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The friends may forsake me, yet I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me and the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though all oppose and persecute, I've made up my mind, I have chosen the way of truth, no turning back, no turning back, Christ is preparing a kingdom I will be there, I will not go back, dry season I will not go back rainy season, I will not go back persecution, I will not go back, poverty, I will not go back, because he is the one that will change every circumstance of your life, I will not go back Say it out aloud. Look at verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He'll set you free. Free from every bondage in your life. All you need is Jesus. He is Savior. He is Sanctifier. He is Healer. He is Redeemer. He is Deliverer. He is the power of God unto us and as you come unto him and you say I will not let go I will not let go I will not let go and Satan is trying to pull you Satan I don't belong to you anymore look that's my savior Jesus look that's my redeemer his name is Jesus look that's my sanctifier his name is Jesus look that's my healer that's my deliverer and you are holding on to him get thee behind me Satan and Satan will leave you alone and then you're not just a member of the church you're a worker in the church you're not just a worker, you'll become a leader. Not just a leader, you'll become a pastor. Not just a pastor, you'll become an overseer. Not just an overseer, you'll become a soul winner. Not just a soul winner, you'll be a fruit bearer. Not just a fruit bearer, you'll be a conqueror. Not just a conqueror, you'll be more than a conqueror. And then you will conquer sin. I said you will conquer sin. You will conquer sickness. You will conquer evil spirits. And everything that comes from the power that comes from the realm of darkness, you stand as a champion. I'm looking at somebody there, champion. You stand as a champion. You say, Jesus has given me. When I said, Jesus, I'll follow you. I'm not going to go back. He gave me the authority and the power of his name. And then he gave me the Holy Ghost or the power of the Holy Ghost and the authority of his name. I am more than a conqueror. I said I'm more than a conqueror. I said I'm more than a conqueror. And I came here tonight to tell you that that spirit and the power and the authority of the conqueror is coming to your life right now. You will overcome. What is the overcomer there? And you're sitting now. Where is the overcomer there? Why don't you close that Bible and then you tell the Lord tonight, tonight, I'm renewing my covenant with you. I behold the Lamb. I behold the lamb. 
I behold the lamb. I behold the lamb. And I believe the liberator. I believe the liberator. I believe, I believe, I believe the liberator. Sin will not conquer you anymore. Evil will not conquer you anymore. Sickness will not conquer you anymore. Infirmity will not conquer you anymore. Tradition will not conquer you anymore. Judgment sin will not conquer you anymore. Premature death will not conquer your family anymore. Because now you're a member, a member of the body of Christ. Now you are a worker, working for the Lord. Now you are a leader. Now you are a pastor. Now you are an overseer. Now you are a conqueror. Now you are more than a conqueror. You tell the Lord, Lord, I behold the Lamb tonight. I behold the lamb tonight and I'm free and I'm free and I'm free I behold the liberator believe the liberator tonight and I am free and I believe I believe I believe it makes you more than a conqueror and then also you benefit you benefit from the power of the Lord you benefit from the Lord himself, the Lord of glory, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he will break the jawbone of that enemy. He will break the backbone of that enemy. And he'll put down every other power, every other authority in your life. Tell him, free from sin, free from sickness. Free from Satan, free from evil spirit. Behold the Lamb. Believe the liberator. Benefit from the Lord. He is yours. He is yours. He is yours. All you need, you find in Christ. All you need, you find in Christ. He saves. He sanctifies. He heals. He provides. He delivers. He satisfies the longing of the soul. All you need, you find in Jesus. All you need, you find in Jesus. There's victory for you tonight here. There's power waiting for you tonight here. There's authority waiting for you tonight here. There's courage waiting for you tonight here. You'll overcome. You will overcome. Because he conquered. He passes it on to you. You too, you will conquer. Nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. You are on God's side. And Jesus is on your side. Victory all the way. Success all the way. Conquering all the way. Power all the way. Dominion all the way. Satan cannot tempt you with a peanut. You say, I'm higher than that now. That's peanut. Satan cannot tempt you anymore with a scrap of paper. You say, I'm greater than that now. That's just a scrap of paper. I'm higher than that. You break all your link with him. You break all your association with him. I hold on to Christ. I hold on to Christ. I hold on to Christ. It's my savior. It's my sin bearer. It's my substitute. It's the power of God for my life. You will not be tired. You will not be weary. You will not faint. New energy will come to you. A new power will come to you. A new authority, new anointing will come to you. 
every need of your life it will supply a lamb for the individual a lamb for the family a lamb for the nation a lamb for the world a lamb for the universe and a lamb for you it's right there with you right there with you right there with you behold the lamb believe is your librato benefit from the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody expecting freedom from the land there tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. The lamb has died for you. You will not perish. The liberator has come for you. You will not remain bound. And the Lord is for you. All the benefits of Calvary will point your life today in Jesus' name. Any victor there? Any conqueror there? Any believer there? Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. You will solve all the problems of my life. Raise up that hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you tonight because of your love. You have sent Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. He has taken our sins away. I pray that that definite experience will come to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. In your love, in your mercy, in your compassion, Take the condemnation of sin away from your people in Jesus' name. And the weakness of their nature. Replace that with the strength and the power of Christ in Jesus' name. Give your people the power to go and sin no more. The power to be victorious. The power to live according to the light of the life of Christ. Jesus has given us an example. And we living big and strong in us. will live after that example. And every one of us will be victorious more than ever before in Jesus name. And Lord we know that by your stripes we are healed. By your stripes we are healed. No incurable disease can stand here today. No perennial disease can stand here today. No family, traditional, tribal sickness will stand here today. Lord, I come on behalf of your people because of the lashes you bore, because of the weeping you bore, because of the stripes you bore for everyone. Take all their sicknesses away in Jesus' name. That brain is sanity, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. What the people of the world call incurable disease, those may be on people outside, but on those who are inside the kingdom, you incurable disease and you terminal disease, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. I bring that husband under the blood of Jesus. I bring that wife under the blood of Jesus. I bring those children under the blood of Jesus. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Sicknesses in the midst of the people of God, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, you are the one that had the power to destroy all the works of the devil. Anywhere Satan has been walking with his fallen angels, anywhere he has been walking with evil spirits, with mummy water spirit, 
with familiar spirit with any kind of deadly spirit i command that legion of evil spirit get out in jesus name i sprinkle the blood of jesus upon every soul here upon every brother here upon every sister here and i command all those works of the devil you are destroyed you are demolished you are scattered right now this brother is free this sister is free lord break every yoke break every chain destroy every oppression of the devil in jesus name lord the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof and this is our father's territory if the other people outside are eating well and they have work and they have money and they are not poor we the children of the creator we the children of the king of kings poverty i cancel you in their lives get out in jesus name joblessness get out in jesus name lord i speak prosperity into the life of your children lord i speak employment into the lives of your children let joy come in every life let provision come in every life lord you are the giver of life and they say that somebody's swamp is dead over there they said one man there is impotent lord we claim a miracle for him we claim a miracle for her and we pray oh lord every form of barrenness take it away in jesus name lord i pray miracle children your grant unto all your people who desire it in jesus name lord strength conviction backbone courage vision to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature never staying back never looking back never getting tired becoming stronger and stronger in the work of the kingdom mighty strength from on high i bring upon your people tonight in jesus name drive weakness away i pray lord everyone now will rise up in the strength of the lord they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they'll mount up with wings as eagles you will run you will not be weary you will walk you will not faint lord bring the spirit of the conqueror in everybody's life right now and lord i pray in christ all needs will be supplied everyone will never look away from the lamb any challenge any day any time behold the lamb any difficulty any challenge any time believe the liberator anything that will try to frighten our lives benefit from the lion of the tribe of judah and the power of god will abide with you the strength of the lord will abide with you the courage of daniel will abide with you and the perseverance of shadrach meshach and abednego will never live your life and i pray that this work of the lord will keep on prospering in your life you will not lose your reward here god will reward you in heaven god will reward you as you turn to the left blessing you turn to the right blessing you move forward blessing god will bless your coming out the lord will bless your coming in in the church blessing on the street blessing the lord surround you with his power and protection all the days of your life you'll be strong 
and you go stronger and stronger nothing will ever conquer you from this day you are more than a conqueror confirm your blessing upon every life in Jesus name I thank you Lord because I know it is done in Jesus name I pray